Hi, uh, this is Sandeep and uh, welcome to Durga Soft Mobile Application Development with Android. And uh, today here we are going to talk about the Android application development and a little bit of history and uh, the core concepts of Android. And I'm Sandeep and I have been working with the Android application development for the past five years. And uh, I had been developing uh, so many c other kind of applications like social applications, I mean social media applications, entrepreneur applications and uh, a little bit of native which are only specific to specific uh, uh, you know platforms and all. And uh, let's get into the straight into the Android and what is Android and how is it working on and uh, what the application development goes on with. So what is Android? Android is not actually uh, simply a software or an operating system. It's both a software and operating systems for mobile devices. So which means that you keep it's a couple of packages which supports you on any kind of hand hardware. It had everything. I mean, it had everything from bootloader to the application development till the application level. So Android is basically works on the Linux kernel, uh, which was being developed on the li Linux kernel. So it will be based on the Linux kernel, and it was first developed by Google, and later has been incorporated with Open Handset Alliance, which is also called as OHA. And uh, OHA is not a specific uh, alliance that is uh, related to a specific company precisely. It is actually a collection of so many other companies uh, where you had the mobile operators and entrepreneurs and a lot of other application developers, software companies, manufacturer units and so many others. So firstly, uh, let's talk about on what actually the Android will be written in on generally in order to uh, make an application an Android application you generally need Java concepts so much of inheritance and overriding overloading and what are the core concepts you call as oops you should be very keen on those topics so that it will be very easy while developing an uh, Android application so the very first Android application or Android phone has been announced on 5th November 2007 which was founding by OHA and uh, later then it has been developed or it has been releasing a phone mobile phone by T-Mobile on 2008 which was announced as the very first mobile of Android in history it's called T-Mobile G1 so and regarding the history or the founders of Android, it has been included a team or the key players of the Android incorporation was Andy Rubin, Rich Miner, Nick Sears and Chris White. These four people actually were the main key players in developing an Android or you can call it as a mobile OS which has been now we are talking about an Android platform. And in late 2007, uh, there are a group of industry leaders, as we called as OHA had, is not uh, precisely an individual manufacturer or indi in individually operated. It has been our uh, industry leaders came together, and uh, the main agenda of OHA is to provide a high quality uh, mobile OS with very less, which is very less expensive, and. Of course, you can find so much of details and more of deep digging on OHA in uh, the link which has been specified on the screen, http www.openhandsetalliance.com. So the Android SDK was first issued. As you know, the Android applications has to get developed only when you had a support of Android SDK. So the very first Android SDK was issued or released in November 2007 which was called 1.0 or you can call it as Android SDK release 1.0 and after the T1 G1 release there were much of interest that has been inclined or that has been attracted towards the Android mobile OS because the very smartphone that was available in those days is except iOS you don't find any other smart devices so when you call smart devices 
you don't only see smart devices as if we see now and if you go to 2007 or earlier to that the smartphones is something which is out of idea that means internet connection in a mobile phone is a dream till then till an ios mobile has been developed to develop or uh, see an internet connection inside a mobile so till then we see the internet connection on the desktops or laptop connections but later then ios has been uh, releasing a smart mobile but which is not really very uh, you know coming into the hands of each and every common man because of its cost effectiveness or uh, because if it it's high cost and availability android sdk is actually an open source code which has been released under apache source open source license which means as we see apache had so many uh, free open source softwares so android also took part of it and also took the place of a free sdk that is available for the mobile oss which can which is actually called technically as a smartphones so if you see the graph on the screen the android timeline has been changed from timeline to timeline like if you see in 2005 google buys android inc but most of the people had an impression that google actually invested something in android and uh, android is something is a part of google by its origin but it's not the way it, that actually had a rumor uh android incorporation or as we spoke oha is the first origin where android has took its origin or it took its roots then it has been incorporated by google later and on 2005 it worked on dalvik virtual machine starts which what we are going to talk about dalvik virtual machine in further classes anyhow and as of now you can simply think of that like work done dalvik work, work uh, i mean it's a start of dalvik virtual machine and in 2007 oha announced its very first mobile or um, its very first sdk release and 2008 you see the g1 phone which was been announced by t mobile and the very first sdk officially released 1.0 version and 2008 you see the android open source which means that it has been available to each and every technical geeks around on that area so he can simply download the sdk from anywhere and start his development for the mobile applications so what is oha or which is called open handset alliance so open hal uh, handset alliance is not a single or individual corporation that got operated it has a group of 47 technology and mobile companies come together as we as i spoke before before that in order to accelerate the innovation in mobile technologies and offer rich experience with less expense and better mobile experience so as i spoke the smartphones available in that area so around that time was only the ios which means that it had i mean user or the common man had no other option except to go to ios if he has to use a smartphone so open handset alliance took the seriously where the 47 technology and mobile companies came together in order to give the users a rich experience in the very cost effective nature which means very less expensive and together all these 47 companies has invested together into the development of android and and then we see the present version of android which is the collective hard work of open handset alliance and the motto of oha is always that it's commercially deploy handsets and services using android platform with rich consumer application and less expensive and uh, there you see the server companies who is a part of uh, oha or open handset alliance and you see so many of the top companies of today and uh, 
previous times uh, and they had been collectively and today whatever android version that we are seeing in our mobiles is the hard work of all these people or at least their pennies has been invested on this google android and of course they had been segregated uh, into different categories like there are few operators and you can see the software companies that has been into this OHA and commercialization companies, semiconductor companies and handset manufacturers. So the most important role was played by each and every part of this uh, operators, software companies, commercializations and semiconductors and handset manufacturers all together. It's not only a simply a LG or Samsung or any other mobile platform or mobile company we are talking about it is completely each and every part of these people had put on their effort and we see the presently we have seen uh, we see very sophisticated phones for this time and previously the very first G1 Droid mobile actually looked in that way that that means the very first Android phone HTC G1 which was released by T-Mobile and uh, Moto Droid X which is a little bit more advanced than the previous versions and Suno, Samsung Galaxy and Sony Ericsson each and every company has been incorporating Android mobiles and all this together will make a big very big stakeholders of Android and today smartphones stakeholders and there are two kinds of Android devices one is the phones that we saw now and there is also called tablets so the same thing when we take it in iOS we call them iPhone and iPads so in the same way we in Android we call them as phones normal smartphones whatever we call it whatever we call it Android phones and uh, the in, in place of iPads we call them as tablets because of course that has been a, that name has been already um, patented by a voice so you can't use that same name for android devices at least for the segregation so you see the difference of the phones and these tablets is that the size of this um, tablet is more higher than or more large than a phone so specifically the tablets will be kind of size of small notebook where it will be very easy to read any kind of ebooks or you can it will be very easy to uh, any kind of thing that you can do on a phone for movies songs you can see you can do anything so it's uh, nowadays we see so many other tablets which had the even uh, sim slot which can be used for uh, calling purposes normally the tablets is not something that you actually use for calling some persons out of your network uh, but this is something we call in android culture we call them as phablet which means that it's phone plus tablet we call it as phablet so two kinds of devices one phones and two tablets and yes the platform android is a platform and it's not a single piece of hardware it's complete and end-to-end -end software it had everything even from bootloader to the application level it had everything in there you don't need to put anything new onto the hardware device in order to make it full android android is not a piece it's complete and the best part of android is that it supports or it can be adapted to any hardware configurations with minor changes of course because uh, the android os for me or for my mobile used and for the other company mobiles used may or may not have a minor changes so it's not something that it, it is very rich in its flexibility it's completely flexible in order to fit fit to the hardware configurations and adapt to any working devices any working hardware devices so that is why today you see the hardware um, which is not only android has been limiting it that the phones are tablets we actually see even the uh, tvs android tvs which is going to be very recently get 
getting into the market and Android TVs where which means the watches which are called smart watches which gives you uh, the similar kind of information that you actually see on your mobile so that's what uh, Android is not something very reached that it can be changed at any point any level in its um, era so that it can be adaptable to the any hardware configurations provided hardware had I mean Android had some uh, configuration um, policies like it has to be this much of RAM and this much of uh, CPU and uh, this many hertz of frequency so up to that level yes there it has to have few prerequisites you have to match it then you, from there on you can take Android to any next level you can think it left to your creativity so we see some of the stakeholders um, operators device manufacturers software vendors where these people are being originated from OP OHA open alliance uh, open handset alliance people and uh, they make the stakeholders they were totally uh, completely into the stakeholders I mean all these parts come into the stakeholders not one people leaving behind or no one is words are better in this it's just that all these people together will make a stakeholder and will make a better Android OS and uh, as today we see the mobile experience previously uh, we had been used phone pager PD organizer laptop portable music player you can call it as um, iPod or any wa Walkman or any music device you use it separately apart from your phone and previously the phones used not to have any internet access even though you had it's very limited access but all these six are not the only thing there could be some other more uh, technologies that has been used previously but they had been completely compressed into a single thing called smartphone so you can do all those things in the left in one single smartphone I mean your phone could be your pager in order to receive any kind of messages from anywhere or from any of your close ones and also the portable music player we know that as today we each and every hands are being decorated with the smartphones so we don't need uh, so much of introduction for that I feel so no internet access and limited access previously but today smartphone is something that which means that it which acts smart and uh, it's also had other definition called which had internet so the basically the idea behind uh, calling it a smartphone because it is having an internet access so of course we are using that for everyday whatsapp facebook and whatever the applications you use those all need internet so I don't need to explain that further and this is for today and tomorrow do you think anything more maturing mobile experiences so for example today the phone has become the pager music player laptop game station GPS and not what it's even it's becoming part of your payments I mean I mean it's a uh, it's going to be your wallet which means Google wallet is something that is being used for paying your payments and all simply by bumping or simply by putting your phone near to our device so that your payment is simply done there and you see uh, there are so many other applications that's coming into the mobile smartphones which means like uh, there were daily usage applications which will uh, could be like into the health sector which give, which acts as your medical advisor and uh, car home office keys that could be your uh, you know the meetings uh, organizer and also the book readers where you see this lot of PDF books coming in so you can simply download that to your smartphone and simply read it on anywhere just like that on a simple tweak and cash on demand yes you can actually pay your payments from anywhere using simply 
making your mobile as your wallet or digital wallet we call this normally in the technical terminology as digital wallet where you see or you pay your payments anywhere simply putting on some money on your phone of course there is security concern with that but of course we simply end up in uh, making it more secure each and everything day by day so playstations this is one of the uh, wonderful component of a smartphone i feel where uh, you can play any number of games and the quality and uh, the kind of the ex gaming experience is being enhanced uh, day by day and also some other uh, joysticks and also there were extra accessories that you can connect to your phone you can make your phone as simple psp and portable music player we know that and you each and every phone is actually being equipped with the music player video players radio by default and you can also make it as a tv and uh, portable tv on a smartphone uh, which may not be looking so much of uh, convincing by today but yes it is uh, because uh, if some people by now should have been used cast screen option that was present in uh, recent android versions which has been implemented or uh, incorporated in 4.4 plus android devices which means that it's coming on lollipop with the cast screen simply you can cast any screen or you can simply cast with the chromecast which helps to see your tv tv directly on your phone or um, you can share any screen by chromecast or you call it cast screening so yes it it is also a portable tv of course the android tvs are on other hand i'm only talking about the smartphones and laptop yes uh, today the smart devices or the tablets that you actually seeing around are being working as a simple uh, laptops these days because it, it actually kind of, uh, having all kind of uh, hardware that has to be incorporated like keyboards mouse and you simply connect to your tablets and you see it just converted into a simple laptop in seconds so and yet uh, it's left to your own uh, creativity what can a mobile like mobile phone can be converted into or I mean it's not literally converting into but it's that for what you're going to use it so you can use it to any purpose as of now we can see a listed um, list of things on the screen which is being pre uh, now being used and yes there are yet to come and uh, we see them in near future and there are some competitors I mean of course there is a competition every time in the technical perspective so of course the competition always helps us to keep on improving us in case of quality and uh, getting near to that more and more to the people so the very first competitor as of everyone knew it's apple incorporation where you see ios ipads mac macintosh whatever the devices are they comes out of apple incorporation and uh, this is one of the competitors to android and uh, microsoft as we know microsoft also had been released some smart devices before android uh, so of course they had been very limited or they had been used by very limited people so it's completely knocked into the hands of very common people like as of in uh, like android or some other uh, other phones and nokia nokia is a very old uh, company that we actually very um, you know close with the mobile phones uh, mobile phones I mean the, I'm, the, I'm not actually putting it to the smartphones but I'm talking about only mobile phones which were having a simple keyboard and which is having a black and white screens yes Nokia is also a competitor uh, and Palm is an another voice which is also uh, prior to Android and was the competitor to Android and I actually personally feel that these were not completely uh, you know in the race as of now because Nokia is already incorporating to Android OS by now and you have seen so many Nokia phones that has been released with Android OS 
similarly microsoft also released a few phones of course they are very low versions and the research in motion is another uh, mobile os company which is also a competitor to android and symbian symbian is actually the os of nokia that has been incorporated nokia for so many days and uh, symbian symbian is actually very uh, you know very low kind of os which means it gives only the digital and black and white screens which has been left farther in the past so yes android has competitors and the list of competitors you see there are not only six and there are another OE, other so many OEs in the market of course they doesn't come into a light because android stakeholders or stake is a lot more bigger than any other mobile OS in the world till now and let's come to the platform okay and uh, let's come to the android back and uh, let's get into the core concepts the architecture of android actually consisting of so many parts as i told you it had everything from bootloader to the application level and if you see the picture on the uh, your screen it had different layers i mean it's actually called as android software stack where you see applications application framework libraries android runtime linux kernel so each part of it is actually working at different level so as you speaking the linux uh, kernel works at driver level and libraries work at their core components level and android runtime is something we speak about more detail in the further classes and application framework where you see your call managers contacts resource managers which we can again get into the detail in further classes and application level is where we generally run our user apps in the sense any application that you run i mean any application you develop and you run it on your mobile phones are actually running on the application layer if you take applications as one layer application framework as one layer libraries as one layer and kernel is one layer so each of this part is actually coming into different layers and comes into scenario different processing time and applications is what now uh, any application developer develops the applications and uh, runs his applications on so generally we see home contacts phone or whatever the applications that you see on your mobile phone including the calendar or your call logs each of it as an is an application which comes into the very first layer so all other layers will actually help you in order to make your application seamless so in the sense if you had contacts uh, the contacts in the first layer will be related with the content providers that is present in application framework because the con content providers is someone responsible for saving your contacts in your phone or any other sync or uh, it is responsible for your any data you go save in your phone so contacts is somewhere contacts will actually go to content providers and get the contacts to show them